right, ladies and gentlemen, we are excited today. We've had our sales championship belt ceremony. If you don't know what Club Colors, one of the things that we do that we're absolutely proud of is we like to recognize top performers at the organization. So every single month, we have this fantastic championship belt that we put together with our company logo on it that ultimately is a reflection of the accomplishment of the top brand advisor, which essentially is a sales representative at the Club Colors organization. And we provide that to the top performer for the month highest percentage of budget. Now, what does that mean? In order to create the highest percentage of budget, you certainly got to be creating a lot of value, a lot of service, and um, you've got to be putting together unbelievable projects. It's a very competitive space that we have here. We've got a tremendous crew. This month, our October belt winner is Yaya Demska. Yaya, congratulations. Thank you so much. And by the way, welcome to the studios of In The Club. And this is being sponsored and brought to you by Reach, where we inspire, engage, and influence. Thanks for coming in. We've also got her division manager, newly appointed, newly oh, promoted, <laughs> Adam Sto Stozinski. This is really fantastic. Welcome, guys. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having so, us. So, first question, Adam, tell me a little bit about Yaya. How proud are you of Yaya for her accomplishment? Super proud. I mean, um, the first thing that comes to mind is just hard work and dedication. Uh, I told Yaya a few days ago, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. That's Yaya for you. Um, usually working late. She's always in early. Um, but hard work is really the definition of um, really what has paid off for Yaya. So really proud of her. Adam, what does it take to be a belt winner? What does it take to be a champion at Club Colors? It's a lot. Um, I'd start with mindset. Mindset is the first thing. Um, not getting overwhelmed, just having that mindset of success. And uh, hard work and mindset really is where it starts. Um, just pushing yourself to continue to build those relationships with your clients and doing all the all the things that, that matter, really, all the little things. We love that. Overwhelmed is not a thing, right? Typically, overwhelmed means you just don't have a good enough plan. Exactly. And yeah, yeah, you obviously had a tremendous plan uh, and came through with a very high percentage of budget. Congratulations. So I want to ask you, yeah, yeah, what did it take in order for you to get to this position of, hey, show the belt? Championship, champion, sales champion, belt winner. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. What'd you, what did you do? Tell me about the adversity that you had to overcome. We've got a lot of challenges going on in supply chain. We've got a lot of challenges going on in the industry. There's a lot that we have to overcome on a regular basis in order to provide elite premium service, which we pride ourselves on. So how did you stand out amongst the crowd of unbelievable champions that we have within the organization? Great question. Uh, I think that there's so many different reasons and ways. I'm really glad that Adam brought up mindset because if you don't have the right mindset, it can get stressful. You know, lots of orders coming in and you want to do your best on every single one of them, put your heart into every single one of them. So um, for me, it starts with coming into the office and having a plan, essentially making sure that every single event date that I have on my plate is met and everything turns out perfectly. Um, so when I get into the office, I write down the first five most important things that I need to do that day. I need to knock those out first, and then I start to trickle down into everything else I need to do. To add to that, though, being fully transparent with all my clients has really helped me develop stronger relationships with them, for one. And two, you need to be transparent with your clients, like the global supply chain issues. We need to get our orders in now. I'm going to encourage you and advise you to do that just so that way we have peace of mind that your order is fulfilled, that your event is going to go perfectly and that everything turns out how you want it to. That's such tremendous advice. Yeah, yeah, because we are in an event driven uh, industry, right? This is very much in hands day driven, which is why part of our brand promise is Right solution, right place, right time. Look, some nobody just wakes up one morning and goes, I'm going to order a thousand t-shirts with my company logo <laughs> on it, right? Hey, let's spend some money. That's a rarity for us, right? There's always a purpose behind the reason why they're getting some sort of branded item, whether it be a hard good or apparel. Exactly. There's always a reason. There's an event. There's, um, in your case, being in the collegiate market space, by the way, Club Colors has two divisions. We handle corporate accounts, so large corporate companies where we can build their company stores and we can essentially handle their initiatives through HR marketing and overall brand initiative. But on the collegiate space, we're dealing with admissions, we're dealing with graduation, we're dealing with, you know, all of the department level events that happen on campus in order to create a community, to create a brand 
experience for those students. Those students are spending a lot of money to go to those schools. They need something beyond an education in order to feel part of that community. So talk to me a little bit about, you said you come in in the morning and you've got five things that you've put together, right? You've got a plan walking in. Why is that so important as a, as a representative, as a brand advisor in the sales game? Why is it so important to walk in and know the plan and execute that? It's really important because you don't want to lose out on any type of order. You don't want to disappoint a client and not meet their enhanced state. When you walk in and you prioritize the things that you need to do, you understand that this event is happening, you know, let's say two, three weeks from now. I think the most important thing for Yaya is um, having a method and just having a plan. I mean, that's something that seems so simple, but not many people have it, mm -hmm. right? Having a plan when you shut that car door and you walk into the office um, and not trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to do today? Yeah, I already has that. Yeah. So she sits down, she already knows, okay, cool. Here are the five things that I need to do. Here's what I need to execute today. And she goes when, um, when she comes in and she's on, you can tell what she has her, her things ready to rock and she's dialed in all day long. You made such a great point too about, you know, um, being transparent, right? Being transparent with your client is managing expectations yeah. in sales. So many people think that sales is just about like, this amazing line that you use to close a deal. No, nobody wants to be closed anymore. Let's face it, right? People want to be guided. They want to be handheld and they want to be comforted, right? And part of that is the transparency and that communication of tra that transparent communication so that you can manage expectations. Look, if someone's going to be late and you don't tell me until after the fact, I'm probably going to be a little bit more upset than if you let me know and then you let me know that you have an alternative method. You have a backup plan. You have a different way that you can advise me to still achieve the same goal. Mm -hmm. It may not be exactly what it is that I want, but in this current climate, sometimes we got to be agile and be able to maneuver. You clearly did that. So talk to me a little bit about some of the projects that you worked on. What was your favorite project that you worked on that came through in October? In October, uh, so we started working with Southern Utah University and we uh, were newly licensed with them. And I got in touch with our bookstore manager, our awesome partners over there. And um, they gave us the trust to essentially put together a pop-up shop for the entire school. So um, it's a lot of trust. It's every single faculty member getting one free apparel item on the school. And um, it went very well. I mean, some people ordered extras because mm -hmm. they love those items so much. And they what goes into building a pop-up shop? I mean, that's got to be pretty elaborate, lot, right? John, There's a lot. lot that goes into that. <laughs> so, so we're we're so I know what we do, but let's let our audience know what we do here, right? So, what goes into building a pop-up shop? So, I'm a marketing manager, right? And I go, mm -hmm. hey, look, we want to give a piece of apparel, a logoed item of some sort, to every staff member. Mm -hmm. Now, at a university, how many staff members are there? Good Lord. Lots. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. So we're talking, what, 15,000, 20,000? Yep. And they want to, the school, very generous of the school, by the way. Really great weird. brand, <laughs> great brand awareness, great brand uh, recognition. But uh, so the school decides, hey, we're going to build this pop-up. What goes into that? So many things. So typically, actually, uh, the process takes one to two weeks to organize everything and then another week to actually create the shop and launch it. Um, when they came to uh, me with the um, opportunity, uh, they told us that we needed to do this all in one week rather than the two to three week time frame that we typically do. So, so you turned around putting together a pop-up shop for 15,000, give or take, people. With all the technology, sourcing product in the face of adversity with the economic conditions, and normally it takes us two to three weeks and you turned it around in a week. Exactly. You, I... Got off the phone with her. I, uh, for a few hours, sourced all the products that she needed. Um, I called her immediately and I said, we need to pick these right now. She picked all of the items that we wanted to put on the shop, their favorites. And I immediately got to um, the artwork stage, making sure that everything looks correct, decorated. That typically takes a few days to nail. But you, when there's urgency, we need to act quickly and make sure we're doing everything correctly. So um, within two to three days, we had finalized all of the options and um, essentially began creating the shop. And our design lab is so incredibly phenomenal because I can't believe that something that would take a week to build, they did in a day and a half. So by the way, if you don't know what our design lab is, our design lab is our branded marketing department. The reason we call it design lab is exactly that. Um, our design lab essentially takes concept and turns it into real life, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So you came to them with with your representatives from uh, Southern Utah, right? And yes. essentially said, this is the concept. 
and it's got to be turned fast. And they took that concept and they turned it into the proper uh, marketing materials, technology, uh, platform, all the things necessary to essentially source product, get it up, be able to present it to the potential buyers so they could select. By the way, Club Colors does not provide a catalog, right? We don't say here, here, shop, here's a catalog, right? So we work with a client to understand what the outcome is that they desire. And then we essentially go shopping for them. We come back to them with the items, right? And then they say, so you said she picked them, right? So you brought, what, 10, 15 different options out of 9 million different SKUs. Yes. Said, this is right for you based on what your desired outcome is. She said, mm -hmm. boom, that one, that one, that one. Yep. So you saved hours of time there, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and then at that point, they build the store, right? Mm -hmm. And then that store gets launched on campus. It does, John. What I want to highlight, too, is what the, I think the coolest part about these pop-up shops um, is it involves our entire team on the front end. Now, of course, every order is touched by accounting and design lab and production, everything. But when we're doing these pop shops, um, after we have that conversation with the client, we hop on an internal call with our production manager, with our web development team, with our design lab, with accounting and sales included. Now we talk it through, right? What items are we doing? What's our timeline look like? Do we have space here? What's production looking like? And the whole team comes together um, as a unit really to put this all together. So, And it's all, Adam, with the intent of the enhanced date, right? Because yep, exactly. at the end of the day, exactly. again, it goes back to nobody wakes up and says, I need a thousand of these just for giggles, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, there's a purpose. There's a purpose. They're trying to set a message out and there's an enhanced date because of the event. There's something they're trying to achieve. So that becomes the number one thing you backtrack from there. Exactly. Right, number so you start thing. with that. That's the number one thing, and then you backtrack from that to become a solution provider. Oh, we say reverse engineer, right? That's the I like one of the that. things that we always say. It's in our vocab every day, but we reverse engineer the process and starting with the event date, we're going to go from there. So there's no just standardized process. I mean, there's a standard of performance that we have. There's a standard methodology, but we will customize the process to meet the enhanced date, meet the client's needs, wants, and whatever the price point is, the level of creativity they want to get to. Speaking of creativity. I want to know what the most creative project was that you worked on for the October month. So this one, we actually did. Give me a banger. Just <laughs> blow, blow some minds here. Well, my favorite project, actually, uh, we closed it up in October. It's the Case Western Coffee Kits. A coffee kit. Yes. All right. So my mouth started watering. What the heck is a coffee kit? <laughs> I'm suddenly so tired. <laughs> um, so it was for the medical residency program. They wanted to do something nice for their interviewees that um, during COVID last year, they did not get a chance to actually come in face to face to interview. And this year, again, they could not do that because of the guidelines. So um, they wanted to bring a taste of Cleveland to every single person that interviewed. And so they wanted their brand to go home. Exactly. They wanted to take their brand to the household. Exactly. Those those people couldn't come to the campus. We'll bring the campus to you. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Drop ship, um, you know, direct to home. It worked perfectly. So what ended up happening was um, the client, Dina, she sent us a ton of chocolates and coffee that she wanted us to include in the kits because we do, you know, customize these and we don't have to provide all the items that go in there. If there's something that you're dead set on loving and want to include, we'd be happy to add it's it. It's from a local you. shop out there. Yeah. Campus. So it was literally um, Cleveland branded um, coffee and um, Cleveland chocolate bars. chocolate bars. Nice. So delicious too. Um, but so what was the outcome of that? What was the reaction? It was phenomenal. I mean, we included, um, a pen and a tumbler mm -hmm. of our own in there, as well as a card. Uh, we put some crinkle paper in there, five items total, I believe, and including the note card, that'd be six. But, um, the response was phenomenal. The interviewees, they absolutely loved them. Dina actually told me that some people on campus were looking at these and they were like, where did you guys get those? Um, we want some. So it's it's always really rewarding to see the impact that these things have um, as far as boosting morale, making people feel special as they should and, you know, honoring something. And I guess just I love the fact that she wanted to send them before just to get in those good spirits, I think it just shows a lot about what branded merchandise can actually do and the power of it. All right, yeah, yeah. I got another question for you, and then we'll wrap up here. Yeah. Aspiring salespeople, people currently in sales, people within the building in sales, uh, people that are coming out of college, want to get into sales, people that maybe have been in sales for years but never got recognized as the top performer within their organization. Give them one or two nuggets of, of what would you recommend I know that, man, there's, there's a lot of grind in sales, right? There's a lot of mindset. You got to have mindset, behavior, technique. That equals sales success. That's my belief anyways. So what are your 
What are your key fundamentals or key recommendations that you would make to somebody coming up in sales? My key recommendations, I think the first would be you, yes, you're a salesperson, but you're a human as well. You, when you call someone and you want to speak about an opportunity, do, don't try to sound like a salesperson. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to feel like they're getting a call about their extended cards warning. But truly just be yourself. Have these conversations. Open up about yourself. Ask how the client's doing. I think for me, the biggest part about this job is developing the relationships that I have been able to. And that's another point of contention. It's go deeper. Go ask about, yes, what products do you need? What do you need them for? What kind of reaction do you want? How are you planning on using them? Just tell me everything that you can so I can make this perfect for you. Um, so going deeper, going the extra mile, you know, finishing up a project when you get home from work just because, you know, you want to do that for your client. I think that will set you apart from every other sales rep, just your dedication, hard work, and actually caring for the people that trust you with their business. Fantastic advice. Yeah, that's very genuine. I think that's genuine. Be authentic. Genuine. authentic. Yes. Be authentic, yes. right? Yes. The person on the other end of the line is authentic. Be authentic with them. Get in, get to know them. Understand their why, what's their want, and solve the problem. Find the problem. Nobody's going to tell you the problem if they don't trust you first, right? So right. get in there with them. Yeah, yeah, hold that belt high. By the way, nobody at Club Colors, nobody in this world is a champion without other people. It always takes other people around. In closing, Yaya, give me give me a few thank yous. Who would you like to thank? First, I would like to thank, um, well, obviously, Tracy and Dina for trusting us with this project. I'm so happy that it turned out well and how they wanted it to. I've been able to get really close with these clients, so I just want to thank them for opening up to me, trusting me, and um, continuously working with us. You know, it's not just one order. We... We do multiple things together, and every time that we work on something, our relationship grows, and um, it's really fulfilling and rewarding. So, Yeah, yeah, you're a champion, Adam. You're a champion. You've been in the club. Sponsored by Reach, Inspire, Engage, Influence. Thank you so much. Our October Club Colors Sales Belt Champion. Congratulations, yeah, yeah. Can you repeat? That's the question. By the way, if you want to utilize Club Colors for our services, all you got to do is look us up, Club Colors. Dot com. It's real easy. A brand advisor standing by to help you out. We can answer any questions. We can make your brand come to life. By the way, be free to imagine more. Club Colors. 